Hello and happy Friday to all of you out there. It is March 24th and I thought it'd be a fun way to wrap up this week by talking about some rumor credit cards that will be launching hopefully this year. And by that I mean brand new card products never seen before and also some revamps or refreshes of existing products, therefore making them brand new all over again. So if that sounds good to you, then let's jump right into it because we have a lot of awesome juicy content to cover. The first two rumored and highly anticipated cards that are likely going to be launching will be from Citibank. I found this article from Doctor of Credit earlier this month about them filing trademarks for both the City Strata Premier and City Strata Elite, potentially being new cards here. Um, so I went over to the Justia website to look at all the trademarks that were filed, and I did find the City Strata Premier right here. So we can see that the filing date was on December 14th of 2022, so just a few months ago, pretty recent history. As we scroll down, um, we can see for the statements under goods and services that this trademark is for promoting the sale of credit card accounts and the goods and services of others through credit card customer loyalty, reward, and incentive programs. To me, that sounds like a credit card. Also, uh, on the next tab over here, we have the same thing for the City Strata Elite uh, for another filing here. This date was even more, um, a little bit further back on September 8th of 2022. And moving down further, we once again uh, have the promoting of the sale of credit card accounts. But I'm personally excited for this because um, if we go back over here, the Premier version, well, we already have the City Premier. That card exists. I do have it myself. It's a great kind of do-it-all card because it has so many uh, useful triple point categories. So my guess at this point is this could either be kind of one of two things. Either this will be literally the City Premier as it exists, just rebranded with a new name, maybe even some new card art design, but otherwise the reward structure, the type of points, so thank you points, the benefits, like the $100 hotel credit, etc., may all remain intact. In other words, just a refresh or rebranding of the card is a better way to put it. Um, or it could be a total overhaul and complete revamp with some new uh, changes to the reward structure, maybe some additional benefits, as City did scrap their insurance and protections a while ago too. It'd be great to have some travel protections, especially for trip delays, baggage insurance, etc., on a travel-focused car. I'd like to see them bring that back. Also add some more benefits. So I bet the annual fee for this type of product will still be around 95 bucks, maybe up to 125 or so. We'll see um, if it becomes either a really cool new product or just a very slight touch up on the brand. And then for that uh, elite version, my guess is this would be the new replacement for the old City Prestige, which has been closed to new applicants for a long time now. Uh, but current card holders can still use that card. It had some great benefits when it first launched. It got tapered down over time, became less and less and less valuable. But even in its current format with a fourth night free benefit, plus a nice travel credit, there is some value with that. But if no one can apply for it, then obviously we want to have some sort of top tier high end premium card with an annual fee of $400 up to maybe $650, somewhere in that range. On to card number three. Now we have the Hilton Honors Aspire American Express card. This card exists right now. It has for a number of years. It's one of the uh, favorite hotel cards of everybody in the travel space. I'd even argue it's probably the best hotel card ever made to date so far. And now we're talking about major changes to the product. This is on Reddit, by the way, under r slash Amex titled Hilton Honors Aspire Card Potential Changes. So let's run through this quickly here and see what's going on. First of all, annual fee 550 bucks. Right now it is 450. So we're talking about an increase of $100 per year. Reward structures, 14 points per dollar at Hilton, 7X on airfare, car rental, and US restaurants, and triple on all of the purchases. No change there, that's the current structure. Diamond status. Enjoy complimentary Hilton Honors Diamond status, which includes, and then the benefits go from there. Also, no change there. If it's still going to be complimentary with no spend requirement, that's how it exists right now. Next up, Freenet Awards. Enjoy one Freenet Award annually, redeemable at blah, blah, blah. So basically, no blackout dates, no cap. So if you redeem that award at a Hampton Inn for 120 bucks or a Waldorf Astoria for 1200 uh, it doesn't really matter. That is, there's no change to that. 
one night annually with no spend requirement. Part two, enjoy a second free net award after spending $30,000 on your card in a calendar year. That is new, kind of. Uh, the card as it exists right now does give you the opportunity to spend toward a second night, but that requires $60,000 of spend. So this would be kind of like a new uh, halfway mark, 30 k is half of 60, to earn that second night. And then part three is to earn a third night. This is brand new by spending the existing amount of $60,000. $200 Hilton Statement Credit. Receive a statement credit of up to $200 on any keyword Hilton purchase, $50 per quarter. Right now, the card does have a $250 statement credit opportunity for Hilton Resorts. I believe there's only one to 200 resort Hilton um, properties worldwide at the moment that are eligible. So out of, I don't know, six or 7,000 Hilton properties, only being able to use them at 200 or so is pretty small. So the good news would be that this could be valid on any Hilton property. Hotel, resort, doesn't matter. So way, way, way more flexibility, which is a really big welcome addition. The downside is that it goes from 250 down to 200, so less total um, monetary value, and then it's gonna be broken up by quarter of the year, which would be another bummer. So it seems like Amex is trying to drive more use of the card rather than those people who use the credit, say in January, and then soft drawer the card for the remainder of the year. $200 airline credit. Receive a statement credit of up to $200 on airline purchases, $50 quarterly again. Good for both airfare and incidentals on any airline. So taking a quick step back here, the card already has a $200 airline fee credit. It's only for um, incidental charges on one airline that you select from, a, uh, uh, from an eligible list. And it's not super expansive. It's pretty much all US airlines. Now uh, for the changes, it would go to a $50 per quarter uh, credit again, trying to drive more swipes and more use of the card, more frequency. Um, so that would be part of the downside. The good side is that would be for airfare, meaning the cost of your ticket that was never eligible in the past. Also still works for incidentals on any airline. I don't know if that will mean terms and conditions apply, US carriers only, or if it literally means go ahead and do it for Singapore Airlines, who knows? Uh, this is all just, again, rumor stuff, but uh, the quarterly part is a bummer and the flexibility for uh, the cost of a ticket and any airline is a massive improvement. So I'd say that's a huge win for that benefit. The $100 property credit remains unchanged. Uh, $189 clear credit, that is a new addition that we also see on the lights of the Amex green card and the Amex uh, platinum card. So that would be nice for people who don't already have those two cards and who are also uh, clear members. No foreign transaction fees, that remains unchanged and the powerful backing uh, by American Express's insurance and protections, I believe this is pretty much unchanged for the most part although cell phone protection seems to be one of the new additions here. On to card number four. I first saw this one here on the blog, View from the Wing. Um, Gary Leff is the author here. He does a lot of content on American Airlines, so it made sense for him to do a lot of uh, coverage on this card here, which I have not seen a lot of people cover. Citibank is apparently testing a revamp of the premium American Airlines credit card. That is the City Advantage Executive uh, World Elite MasterCard. The real superpower of this card in its current form is the low annual fee of $450 in comparison to other top tier premium cards and the ability to add authorized users to access American Airlines Admirals Clubs at a $0 per authorized user fee. I think you can do like maybe 10 authorized users, something like that, and they all have their own guesting privileges of up to two guests. So if you have a big family, travel in groups with other friends, whatever, and you use Admirals Clubs a lot, this is potentially insane value, saving you thousands per year if you're the type of person who frequents those lounges often uh, and would normally pay for that many uh, visits. But we have some changes quite a few actually. Down here, uh, some posts that came through, again, with more surveys and screenshots from these surveys from this person, uh, SB, right here on Twitter. So there are three different screenshots, actually. This one's a 645 annual fee. 
Then we have some more down here with a, what is it, 550, I believe. Let's open these up. 550 and also 595. So let's start with the low one. Okay, so right off the bat, we see this new fee. It's currently 450, so that's an increase of $100 to the annual fee, $75 for up to two authorized users, then $75 each. Again, right now it is $0, so that would be a major change for the negative. Although, again, if they, as long as they get access to um, the Admirals Club, $75 for two people, which would normally cost five, six hundred dollars a year. That's still a great, great value. Mileage earning four miles per dollar on AA purchases. That's a huge improvement because right now the car just earns two points per dollar or two miles per dollar on AA uh, transactions. So it's one of the least rewarding cards in the world that I've seen in the US market for spending if you want to earn just reward miles. Uh, exceptions would be if you want to earn loyalty points to earn status, then of course spending on a car makes sense. But if you just want to get free flights, redeem your miles, 2x is awful. 4x is literally doubling the current rate, which is awesome. Statement credits and insurance. We have a $100 global entry and TSA pre-check credit uh, once every four years. Some insurance benefits here, including trip cancellation and interruption travel and emergency assistance, lost baggage, car rental insurance. Okay, again, City wiped out all their travel protections on all their travel cards years ago. So now they're uh, testing, should we bring them back in with a slightly uh, increased annual fee, including $800 um, worth of cell phone coverage. Interesting. Additional benefits. Admirals Club membership. You can still bring up to two guests or immediate family members. Okay. Uh, 650 value, that's if you bought the membership directly without the card. Still earning one loyalty point for every um, uh, dollar spent, that's unchanged. Loyalty points boost benefit, tier one and tier two. You get 10,000 additional loyalty points after hitting 40K loyalty points. So earn 40K, get 10K bonus. And then if you hit uh, earn 90K, you get another 10K bonus. So a slight tweak here to the first tier. If we open up the existing card, how it uh, looks right now, there is a benefit to earn 10,000 loyalty po uh, points after spending 40 grand. Now it seems, as I minimize that, that you have to earn 40K loyalty points, which would basically be spending 40 grand if you did it all through spend, but this might also include your flights now too, earnings from flights. So it could be a lot less spending actually. So for those of you who uh, fly a lot, you might like this better. And then the 90K tier uh, is brand new. 50% off in-flight purchases. That's new, I believe it's currently 25 or something like that. Yep, right there, 25% savings. So they're going to double that if you spend a lot on food and beverage in flight. Uh, dedicated concierge, one free check bag for up to eight companions and priority boarding. That free check bag benefit is unchanged. Still had eight companions even right now. Um, and then priority boarding. Right now you get an enhanced airport experience, which includes priority check-in and screening and boarding. So I'm wondering if you don't get all the holy uh, trifecta anymore. If it's just gonna be boarding, that would be a major downgrade. Okay, so that's the 550 version. Uh, now let's go over to 595. This one is 4X miles on AA, same thing. Also adding in 4X on rental cars and hotels, purchased through the AA travel portal, 1X on everything else, uh, same global entry credit, bring it in now a $120 Hyatt credit, plus a 120 Avis or budget rental car credit. So that's 240 bucks right there. Same insurance and protections with cell phone and all that. Um, and anything changed over here. Admirals Club, loyalty points, all that remains the same. So we went from 550 to 595. So for $45 more, you would get 240 bucks of credits plus another 4X category. Uh, so that's that. All right, now we're up to 645 bucks for the annual fee. 4X earning on AA up to 150K in annual spend. Then 5X beyond that. Also 5X on car rentals and hotels. Uh, and then we have even more credits. So same 120 with Hyatt, 120 with Avis and Budget. Now we're going to add in 120 with Lyft, 
that is $10 off your fourth ride every month. So if you don't take at least four rides a month, it seems like that might have a $0 value and then 120 with DoorDash. Same global entry TSA pre-check credit that all three versions had there at the top. Similar or same uh, insurance protections, the loyalty points, Admirals Club, all that remains unchanged. So it's pretty much adding additional uh, reward multipliers and then additional credits with select travel partners along the way to justify the increases in annual fees. And now we get a rumor from Chase, another post here from Doctor of Credit about Chase filing a new trademark for Chase Freedom Rise. And I also pulled that up on Gestia to confirm that. So here it is right there, filing date of February 1st of this year, 2023. Let's see what they say for uh, these statements. Uh, Chase describes it as banking and related financial services, namely, credit card transaction processing and credit card payment processing services. So they're processing the stuff, but are they actually issuing a new product? My uh, gut tells me probably so, even though it's kind of more vaguely explained than uh, what City did with their trademarks. Uh, so I wanna show you this as well. This is kind of interesting. If, if we pull up my own referral link for the Chase Freedom Card, from a change that Chase made to some of their cards a while back for those referral links, you can now re uh, apply for cards within the same family for a lot of these, those links. So again, with my Chase Freedom Unlimited referral link, you can apply for the Freedom Unlimited or the Freedom Flex or the Freedom Student or the Chase Slate Edge, which has no Freedom branding. So we've got the Freedom family over here on the left, but somehow, for some reason, they include the Slate Edge, which is their low, uh, low APR card. If you need to finance something over time and you want to avoid interest, of course, do it smartly so that way you win. But that got me thinking, if Chase files a trademark for Freedom Rise, Rise kind of sounds like starting from the bottom and then going up over time. So that seems to me like it might be a builder credit card for beginners. Perhaps it's gonna be a secured card, maybe another form of student card, or maybe it's going to be a rebranding of the Slate Edge, their 0% APR card, maybe with some additional tweaks to some other features, I don't know. But it would make sense to complete the overall Freedom branding if they're going to include all these together. And finally, we've got Wells Fargo. Uh, unfortunately, this came out over a year ago. There were tons of rumors at the time about the Wells Fargo Trillion, or the autograph, which we now have, uh, the amplitude, the actualize, and the ratio. Wells Fargo is said to be in the middle still of revamping the overall credit portfolio with new rewards cards. So I'm thinking if some of these come to be, there might be some cards with a $95 annual fee, mid-annual fee, maybe even some premium cards or for their wealth management clients. I don't really know. This was on Reddit from like, uh, 2021 or 2022 or something like that. We also have other articles from Doctor of Credit who covered this in 2022, back in January, over a year ago. So I don't really know. There's been no additional updates about potential launches from Wells Fargo beyond what we've seen just with the autograph and the ratio. And having said all of that, hopefully you're now a little more excited about the potential that 2023 might have in store for all of us. If you enjoyed today's video and believe it could benefit or at least entertain other people, then please help me get it in front of them by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and turning on those notifications. Also check out the links down below in the description area to earn some more cash back when you shop online through Rakuten. To get $25 when you sign up for a new SoFi checking and savings account and deposit just $10 or more. And to view my site with some great credit card offers that I've organized into different categories to help you find the cards that you like best. I thank you all for watching today's video. I hope it brought you some great value and some excitement of what could be later on this year. Let me know down below in those comments which card products have you most excited right now that could launch and that you would most want to get. I look forward to seeing you in my future videos and while you're waiting for the next one to hit the channel, always remember that you are great.